and hello welcome back uh, everyone to our radiation heat transfer learning journal in the last video we were talking about this problem of um, well uh, if we were to calculate heat transfer between two surfaces these two green lines here um, we find that okay depending on the direction si okay direction si depending on this the optical distance between let's say the boundary which is here and the surface no the boundary and the point in question which is this point it will have uh, some kind of dependence so how do we account for this well um, the solution uh, can be quite simple okay all right so picture picture this yeah so we have you, you can take this as a reference point, the vertical distance. Okay. This purple line you see here, the vertical distance. This becomes a reference point. Okay. And, and for the variable tau, which depends on the angle, we'll call it tau s. Tau, uh, tau s here. This will be the, what do you call that? Well, it since uh, this optical distance depends on the direction of SI or the direction of the uh, where the radiation is traveling, we'll just call it tau S since that has a dependence on the direction S. So uh, what do we call this? We'll just call this tau. We'll just call this tau, which is the, well, the minimum optical distance this thing will have to travel because it's at 90 degrees. And depending on the angle theta, right? Rather, the angle theta from the normal. So if s, if uh, si uh, is angled this way, it will have a certain polar angle theta from the normal. So this is the normal. Normal. So this is normal, okay. So the angle from the normal is the polar angle. So this is the polar angle. Okay, this is a polar angle. And depending on that, um, tau s will change. How will tau s change? Well, uh, if we take a look at the geometry of it, this is also theta based on the you no know, th these two being uh, straight lines okay so we can write tau s equals to all right or tau or this tau this short tau here equals to tau s cosine theta and that becomes our relation so we'll have this thing called tau s equals to um tau tau over cosine theta that theta is the polar angle okay so this is an important picture to take note of you see this diagram it's very important to take note of so I'll say consider this diagram okay so that's one of the angles uh, the important angle being the polar angle so we can write tau S depends on the polar angle theta. And what about phi? Phi, which is the azimuthal angle. Now sometimes a textbook may use psi or whatever. It's just important to distinguish what is the polar angle and what's the azimuthal angle. Okay, so if you take a look from a top view, right? So let's let's have a top view. Top view, okay, top view. All right, and I'll draw a rectangle here. All right, so what you can see is that uh, basically if we were to look from the top, let's say the purple dot is here, right in center. And this red line, which is the, 
the tau s at least the, the part of the radiation as viewed from the top this will have a certain angle from the normal or rather certain angle from let's say a reference point you have the azimuthal angle phi 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 yeah so that's phi oh, let me let me write it a bit nicer okay it's a very ugly looking phi but it is phi nonetheless okay and then for a fixed theta if a theta is fixed right this a polar angle is fixed no matter how you rotate this line okay the length will still be the same okay because uh, the length that you're talking about here it is actually um, tau s over sine theta because this one is cosine theta this one is sine theta okay so this one depends only on theta right so no matter how you rotate the rotate the pole um, azimuthal angle doesn't really matter so in okay we'll see simply tau s only depends on polar angle and not the azimuthal angle so great that's a that's a little less of a headache for us so so yeah uh, if we can take this equation here we can take this equation here and we can state the coordinates R and S instead of um, uh, using using tau and theta phi so r is the position from some point and s is the um, s is the what do you call that direction which is, which you see this direction vector of the um, what is it yeah direction vector of this uh, pencil of rays this radiation um, okay so so R, we, we say it's a position vector. So since this is 1D, 1D problem, only one coordinate matters. Right? So what's the coordinate that matters? Okay, so it is 1D in this direction. Right? So the only coordinate that really matters is uh, this, this one here. So... Okay, you have, uh, we have, uh, let's say this is the x direction. So the only, the only length that matters, okay, maybe you don't use x, we use tau, right? Um, well, if that, you can think of that as an x, x direction. But what we have in the diagram here is this uh, coordinate, position coordinate tau. So uh, r can be represented by tau. All right, so since R can be represented by tau, that sh should not matter uh, anymore. We, we can replace R by tau because there's only one, one uh, of these uh, coordinates that matters. What about S? What about S hat? All right, what about S hat? So uh, S hat, S hat, is determined by theta theta which is the polar angle and phi azimuthal angle so um okay i need to put a bracket there azimuthal angle so what can we replace this with? We can replace r by tau and s by theta phi. So s will be replaced by theta and phi. And tau s is a strictly a function of tau and theta. 
as was mentioned previously. So, okay, this, this needs to go on top. Okay, rather this needs to go at the bottom. Okay, so we'll change this to theta and phi. This is based on tau and theta. All right. And this tau s prime is just, um, well, it is, uh, remember we're talking about the integral. Uh, it is, let's say, the length here, tau s prime. And we can actually have a equivalent projection on this vertical line here, which is uh, tau prime. Okay, so that's how we do it. So tau s prime, we can make, take it as a uh, dependent on tau prime and theta based on the uh, relations we build okay so anyway we'll just do this tau s equals tau over cos cosine theta all right so this is that this is it and this s will be theta phi and every time you see this uh, tau s uh, tau s appear, you can just write tau and theta. And this tau s prime is based on tau and tau prime and theta prime, or tau prime and theta. And this will be uh, what tau s is determined by. So that should make it more or less right. So basically, we have uh, we have uh, the solution to the radiation intensity uh, determined by three coordinates. So three coordinates are important. Okay, in this uh, plane angle thing. Now to simplify it further, because it's still pretty difficult and uh, pretty hard to uh, do. Okay, to simplify further, we assume. Okay, so let's go to textbook. Okay, so um, for plane parallel medium in change in intensity is illustrated by uh, this this uh, this little uh, thing which was what I was drawing just now, where we had um, this tau prime and um, tau s prime, tau s. So that, that's what we are doing. We have done that already. All right. Um, okay, so that is dependent on the azimuthal angle and the polar angle. Yes. But to simplify further, okay, this is the assumption. Both plates are isothermal and isotropic. Okay, so properties can show a dependence on polar angle, but not azimuthal angle. So, to simplify further, we assume azimuthal no sim symmetry, i.e. no dependence on uh, phi, which is the azimuthal angle. Okay, so that's what that's what this thing is saying. All right. So that um, if we assume this, then I can take phi out of the equation here. Okay. This is the azimuthal symmetry assumption. So that simplifies it to two coordinates are uh, being important. So only two coordinates are important here. And if, let's say, um, if the plates are isotropic, or uh, emit isotropically, okay, that means what? That means, okay, if the plate is uh, emitting here, it will emit this uh, radiation in all the in same intensities in all directions so the if you think about it 
if this is the normal, where does theta appear? It appears here. So if the plate was not isotropic, uh, this, uh, this intensity here from the plate would have a theta dependence. But now we assume it's isotropic. And of course, um, yeah, we assume it's isotropic. And not only that, it has to be isothermal because um, if this, if this, uh, if this is the, the point you consider, then um, we'll have a different angle of incidence here, a pol different polar angle here, which is theta, if you are considering this point. If uh, that is the point you consider, you'll be considering that theta is different and then the uh, position is different. So maybe this can be y. But since this is 1D, we assume there's uniformity across all of that. Okay, so it really makes it a 1D problem. So now, uh, if you have uh, isothermal, meaning the whole plate is uh, same temperature and isotropic, that means no matter what direction um, um, uh, the intensity is being emitted, it is the same. So we, we have this where i omega, all right, which is the intensity of the plates, constant, not dependent on theta. So that that will really make it. Um, that will really make it uh, pretty simple. And of course, uh, this uh, I omega, it only applies for black body, all right? If the, if the surfaces are gray, okay? If the surfaces are gray, the intensity, yeah. The intensity here is determined by radiosity. If it's a black body, then uh, the intensity here is determined by the black body intensity, IB lambda, or IB if you don't take the spectral dependence into account. So, yeah, I omega A is IB if black body, J if it's a, this the J is the radiosity, if it's the surface is gray, Okay, so I is just the intensity of whatever is being emitted at the bottom over there. Okay, so yeah, that's how that's how we kind of reduce this equation a little bit, so that it only determine uh, depends on tau and theta. All right, and not only that, um, the final thing we should. We should kind of, uh, oh, where is this? <clears throat> but anyway, yes, uh, never mind. I was previously saying if this i omega, this is the, oops, this is the uh, intensity due to the uh, surface. And then, um, of course, we want to get this onto, you know, solving something more concrete. Uh, of course, to do that, we need to find out the expression for the source, which is the you know the radiation um, that strengthens the intensity as it goes through the medium. So we might want to take a look at that. Yeah, we want to take a look at that. Oh, and um, I think this should be tau. Yeah. So this should be tau because that is not dependent on the dummy variable. Because tau s is over here, okay. So, uh, anyway, yeah, we want to take a look at uh, the source a little more closely and see what this uh, assumption actually does to the source term. So, what is the source term again? Um, it is this one. So remember, this this is the source term, and um, the tau here it is. So what is the source term? Yeah, the tau here, remember it is actually tau s because uh, it refers to the same physical quantity on the diagram. And of course, this is actually 
uh, determined by tau uh, theta, right? Tau and theta. Um, this is actually determined by the um, medium properties. Firstly, it will be determined by the black body temperature. I mean, the black body emissions. Which this is the emission term. Okay. Uh, normally, there will be a phi dependence, right? If it's not a uniform temperature. Normally, without azimuthal uh, symmetry. Yeah, we will have a phi dependence on this for this uh, thing. And okay, this omega, if it's uh, isotrop uh, an isotropic material, will also have uh, a dependence on the, uh, tau, theta, and phi. Right? And okay, so moving on, um, we will need to find, yes, okay, um, there will be radiation coming in from the direction SJ. Okay, so this is right. This is a uh, radiation coming from tau sj. Okay, so this this again will be determined by let's see tau yes, because again what what are we talking about? Okay, let me first write this first as a guess. Uh, this tau sj is determined by tau and theta j. Alright, so this will be a different tau. Let me put tau j. Okay, so what is this tau j I'm talking about? Yeah, it's important. Like I said, it's very important to have all these diagrams. If not, it get very confusing. Okay, so suppose we have this uh, red line over here going to some particular point. So uh, let's take this point for example. So this is the in scattering term, right? So um, let's say this is SJ and this is SI. So SJ hat is SJ hat, right? Uh, it is um, the direction of the radiation that's coming in from other directions and being scattered into here. So, yeah, so what then uh, determines this radiation? Um, now, what then determines this radiation? So, again, we'll have to do our little uh, thing again, where let's say you have okay, this distance here. This distance here, which is okay, um, if this is tau s prime, this is tau prime, right? Because, uh, yeah, tau s prime is like you know, um, the variable distance from here to here, where this whole distance is tau s, so this is also tau prime. So this thing is actually dependent on the tau prime. That's one of the coordinates. Tau prime. What is the other coordinate? This is the theta j. So this is theta j, right? So depending on theta j, okay, uh, it will have that. Uh, the, the intensity will differ because then you have to take note of um, the intensity from this point, right? From this point, and then sum up all the contributions along this line. So, um, and basically along the line, along that line, you have to uh, do the scattering term all over again. You have to sum up all this, the, the scattering terms. Okay, so as you can uh, imagine, that will get pretty complicated pretty quickly because if we did this, we take this point and we start having to consider radiation coming from here, coming from here, and it'll get pretty messy pretty quickly. So I'm not going to do that, but we're just, just going to 
uh, do it one uh, one bound only. So I'm just going to write that. So it depends on theta j, yes, and also in theory it should be depending on phi j. Right, so hold here. I better give it proper brackets. Theta j, phi j. Right, so that is the these are the coordinates pertaining to this i over here. And sj, okay, sj will be dependent on what? sj will be dependent on theta j, phi j, okay, so I make that distinction there. And this one will be determined on theta and phi. Right, so as you can see this, uh, if we have to do azimuthal symmetry, then we take the phi, de phi dependence out uh, of this uh, scattering term. And this uh, phase function, and of course this, right? Yeah, so uh, if we take out azimuthal, sym uh, azimuthal symmetry, with azimuthal symmetry, we take out phi dependence of all things, including the phase angle. No, not phase angle. The phase function, capital phi. So realize what we are doing by. Uh, Having this azimuthal symmetry assumption, we are taking out the, the dependence, we are severely affecting our scattering terms, in other words. So, with uniform plate temp, we will just have this i black body be the same. Oh, not uniform plate temp. Uniform, uh, what do you call that? Medium temperature. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, we can apply the azimuthal symmetry symmetry assumption, whereby I'll just take this out. All right, I'll take this out because you know the medium can have a arbitrary temperature profile. And depending on that too, um, this will actually also have a arbitrary temperature profile. But if we have the azimuthal symmetry, uh, this um, dependence here will disappear. All right. And of course, the phase function, you kind of have to adjust according to that as well. And Azimuthal symmetry assumes that you are scattering in a very specific kind of way. Assumes you are the medium is scattering in a very specific sort of way. I'm not going to say what way that is, but yeah, just notice that uh, you're taking, you are simplifying things, especially in the scattering term. Okay. So these are the things important to take note if you are doing these uh, um, assumptions. So, yeah. Mm. Okay, if we do that, if we take this azimuthal symmetry, uh, say radiative source S tau theta and radiative intensity I tau theta both depend on only a single space coordinate and a single direction coordinate. The radiative source term may be simplified for the one-dimensional case too. This which you see, okay, you see the phase function still has the side dependence. Um, yep, so, yeah. So actually, this, this actually gives it a little bit of a problem because it may, it may make as uh, dependent on this psi, okay? 
So if we have an isotropic scattering, as, as put here, then we'll have more complicated equations. Otherwise, if, if we have isotropic scattering, then it looks as if this phase function equals to 1. Okay, phase function equals to 1. Then we can just write uh, the following. Okay, isotropic scattering. Then it's truly dependent on the, uh, tau and theta only. And this, this will just be uh, actually um, G. As you can see, uh, you're just integrating the incident radiation across all solid angles. So, in other words, I can just put G, tau, theta. So this is a uh, chain of tau theta is not dependent anymore because you are integrating over all solid angles. It just depends on tau, which is the distance, right? So this is what the source term actually represents after you do uh, the the uh, assumptions of azimuthal symmetry and uh, isotropic scattering. So. This is where we want to start. This is where we want to start for our, what do you call it? Analytical, analytical solution. Because the rest, uh, the anisotropic scattering will just complicate things a lot. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight this in green. Start from the most simple simple case and even the simple case can be pretty complex as you as you can see um yeah but we can start from there so uh we're going to continue the discussion in the next video thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time